Hello there, Revo Deity here with Revamaze Part 3 introspective video, the disassembly and reassembly of V1 Revamaze, specifically the blue Revamaze. So we'll just go ahead and jump right into it and keep it short and sweet. Um, I try to keep this video mostly spoiler free. There are a little bit of spoilers um, with the blue Revamaze. Um, look at the timestamp tags. I tried to cover it up, so even the spoilers, um, the majority of the maze is covered up, so I really don't think it's that much of a spoiler, but you know, you, you know, watch at your discretion. Um, so with that said, you know, I'm going to probably go through and do individual um, assembly and reassembly videos for each Revamaze to make them private because each one has their little uh, unique trick to um, assembling and disassembling. But for now, this is going to be kind of a generic video applying to the, the V1s here. So, you know, kind of a, a recap of, you know, V1 versus V3. So, you know, I have a V1 here on my left and a V3 on my right here. So at a you know, first glance, they kind of look the, the same, but you'll notice that the material is different. Um, the V1 is brass with nickel plating, so it's got a little bit of a shinier look to it. And also, there are a couple parts. There's the, the sleeve, there's the core shaft, and then there's the, the draw here. So this draw, this middle one here, this piece moves a bit on the V1. It's kind of hard to tell. But on the V3, um, that doesn't move, so that's uh, very stiff. You won't see it move at all. And also it's a bit duller because this is actually made of different components. So this is all one piece. For V3 actually, it's stainless steel um, core here, but the, the core itself has a couple pieces where the maze is actually unplated brass. And you can kind of see that a little bit there. So today we'll be focusing on the V1 and there'll be a follow video going over the V3, which is very different. So, you know, if you look at them, even from a first glance, you know, both of these are in the solid position, the, the dots lined up, you'll see that the serial number here on the V1 is up top, but the V3 is on the bottom. So, not only does, you know, there are slight differences going from a V1, V3 besides, you know, the actual core, you'll see like differences in colors of the sleeve based on the different manufacturers that have gone through for anodizing. There are small tweaks made to the maze. Um, the pen lengths are slightly different. So there are small changes throughout the, the years, but you know it, these rules in this video should apply you know, generally to the you know, V1 rubber mazes. Okay, so looking at the, the V1 blue rubber maze here. So again, there's a sleeve in the core here. And how the setup is, you know, when you solve this, you'll get the, the two dots, the dot on the, the core and the dot on the sleeve to line up usually. Now how this is, and here's kind of a, an image of the, the patent document to see, but there is a spring mechanism located in the, the sleeve which pushes the pin down against the maze. So that's kind of opposite of the, the label side. So when you solve it and you're in the solve state like this, the, the spring mechanism is actually below, so the, it's pushing up like this. So when you've solved it, you've gotten to the point where there's a deep enough hole in the core to where the pin can now fall out. But what you have to do is, you know, when you're in this state, you, it's still locked, so you can't get it out. So what you need to do is, with the sticker up, you actually turn it down like this. So your, your fa the sticker's facing down. And this is where you can remove it, but obviously, you know, just putting it with the, the sticker down, you can't remove it. So it takes a little bit of force to get the, the pin to drop down into it. So with the dots lined up, you know, turn the sticker down, you know, usually I give it a couple smacks and kind of hold it with our right hand to keep the dots lined up and then it comes loose. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here and I'm going to remove it. But one thing before I spoil it is this is where the components can kind of fly loose. So definitely doing an open table, you could easily locate the components because it's, it's really easy to lose some of the, the pins and other stuff in here and it could be kind of a pain to replace. But the very first step is before I pull it out, especially with the pins, in the V1, there are actually two pins. There's a pin for the maze and a pin for the draw bar. So immediately when it starts to come loose like this, I turn this 90 degrees. So now the pins are on both sides like this. So when I pull it out, they're not going to fall out. It helps me um, keep them in place so I don't lose them and I can mark them. Okay, so now I've removed the core and I've covered up most of it. So when I turn it 90 degrees, I'll try and put the, my fingers here on the pins. So the first pin you'll see is right there. I'll try and get the glare and light. So this pin, you'll see that there's nothing around it. So this pin actually holds in this draw bar here. So that one will come out later. And then this pin here is the pin for the maze. 
you'll see here's the path that gets deep enough here to where the pin drops in. Okay. Now what I'll do actually is, um, for kind of a newer maze, sometimes I'll take a, a fine-tipped Sharpie, like a blue and red one, and I'll mark the ends here, you know, different color for each pin so I know which orientation it's in. Um, so one thing that's unique about these pins, I'll kinda, I got a quick sketch here, it's kind of rough. So there are you know, two pins here. So this pin here on the left is typically for the maze. So it has a rounded end and a slightly chamfered end. So a chamfered end is when it's cut at you know, 45 degrees, so it's kind of hard to tell. But this rounded end is the one that's contacting the maze. Okay. So when you look back at our pins here, this chamfered end, this slightly chamfered end, is actually the one that's sticking up because when you um, put it back on the sleeve, this goes inside and this part is touching the spring assembly so the part that you can't see that's down in there is actually the rounded and that's the part that's going to be contacting the maze. So that's the, the pin that's used for the maze and then this pin is typically the one used for the, the draw bar. So sometimes this um, varies um, as far as you know these end types. It's really, um, I don't know, it doesn't really matter too much since it's just kind of holding in place. Um, and one thing we'll talk about in the V3s is that the, the pin for the, the V3 and it has the rounded top here, but sometimes you'll see a little nub here, and that's when they machine this down. Um, they have a little piece that's cutting this in on a lathe, and it'll break off before they finish off the nub. So you can see that the draw pin had fallen out. So when this draw pin comes out here, that allows me to take this out, but I need to take out both pins. Both pins hold it in place. So I'll go ahead and take it out. So this is the pin that was in the maze. So I'll try and hold it up here. So this, I'm trying to, okay, so this part right here is the rounded part. So that's the part that's contacting the maze. And the other end, you'll see it's slightly chamfered. Now it's really important to get it right because if you put it in wrong, it's gonna be really difficult to solve because this chamfered part, especially around some of those small, really thin edges, you have a hard time making contact. And the point of it being round is, with it just being flat, those sharp edges can, you know, cause problems and cut into the, the core itself. So then here is the one that was holding in the draw bar. So you'll see here that it's got a, you know, chamfered end. And then this end may also be round. This one kind of varies and may also be flat. So then with these two pins removed, you can now remove the draw bar. And within there, once you pull it out, it will typically have your certificate right there. Uh, some people leave them in, some people take them out, um, you know, to each their own. Okay, so this large hole here, this is the hole where the maze pin goes into. So on the draw ball, you'll see there's a large hole and then a small hole. So the small hole is where the pin for the draw bar goes into. So right now you'll see here's the, the placement for the hole for the, the maze. So I'm going to rotate around to where I have the large hole in here. And I'm going to push this back in slowly to get that certificate in. And sometimes you may need to, like in this case, take the certificate out and kind of make sure it's wrapped. Sometimes you may need to twist it in that way so it doesn't bind up. Okay, so again, the large part here lines up. So what I'll do is I will typically put in the, the draw pin first. So I'll make sure I have the pins right here. So this part is chamfered. Now how the instructions go is this, this chamfer is actually a little bit more prominent. I'll try to hold it up again to focus this. Let's try that again, find out of focus. There we go. So this chamfered, and actually goes in first. So you insert that in. You may need to kind of twist your, your draw bar out a little bit to get it to line up. And there you go, so now it's pressed in. And now I'll put my thumb here, or my index finger, and I'll rotate it around to where I see the, the maze hole. Now this is very, you gotta be very careful. So again, this part here, right here at the top, that is the rounded part and that's the part that I want to contact my maze. So with the rounded part, I'm going to push the rounded part in there, okay? And then what I do is 
At this point, again, I hold it at you know both pins kind of parallel to the earth here so they don't fall out, and then I reinsert it into the assembly. So I'll go ahead and um, pause the video to take this off, but for the assembly part, is you put in both pins and kind of hold it, and then kind of the orientation of the sleeve really doesn't matter at this point. The main thing is to keep it, you know, these pins flat so they don't fall out. Because that's the hard part is when you're putting it in in a certain orientation, the pins tend to fall out. So going back and editing the video, I want to make sure that this was 100% clear just so, you know, everyone got all their questions answered. So the, the two different pins um, drawn out here are kind of shown the orientations and I'll explain the way they are. So this pin here is meant for the draw to hold the, the center cylinder in place. So the reason it has the more pronounced chamfers here, and that's the reason it goes in here, is because the hole in the draw is a lot smaller than the hole in the draw that's meant for the maze pin. So the chamfer helps kind of lines it up when you're pushing it in. And you can tell that um, the orientation of the draw pin and where it is on the core because there's no path to get to it. So when you place it, there's just, you know, there's just a wall around it. So there's no like uh, maze path, if you will. So, and then here for the maze, you're gonna put the rounded end down here. So then the flat end is up. And uh, although it's counterintuitive, so when you, you're looking at it and you actually see the flat end, but when this goes into the, the sleeve, then this part, the rounded part is what it's tracing along the maze. So I wanna make sure that that was clear. Again, I'm gonna have a, a different video on cleaning. If you're having troubles getting the pin out, um, especially on copper where the, the pin's a little bit different diameter, um, one thing that works really well is taking a hair dryer and when it's down in this orientation, such that the hole is down like this, if you take a hair dryer and heat up the this part here, this sleeve thermally expands that hole gets a little bit bigger so the pin could drop through so that does help I have done it myself and you know also as I mentioned earlier you know there's also different you know diameters here it actually steps down about halfway through I know it's kind of confusing and I won't get into it that's what I'm trying to put in the orientation because it's really hard to kind of notice those different diameters of the pins so hopefully that kind of clears things up a little bit and then kind of a close-up too so here's the the sleeve so you'll see that there is a hole on this side where the sticker is and that's just to kind of drill through and create the hole on this side where the spring assembly goes and you can't see that but there's the the spring encased in that hole so if you peel off this sticker here you just see a hole in there and I actually have an example of that right here so there's just a, a hole right there and usually that hole is plugged up and then the spring assembly is on that side right there Okay, so once I inserted this, I'm trying to avoid it to where I don't have any spoilers in the part, to where the pins were parallel and I put it in a little bit to where the pins were now inside the sleeve, I usually have the sticker up and then I push it in until the holes line up. So before when you disassembled, we had the, the sticker part facing down. So now to reassemble, we have the hole or the, the sticker facing up. So again, sometimes like before, um, you may need to give it a good smack and when you do, well, you, you, you can't pull it in and out and you could twist it that means it's back in the correct position so at this point you could you know put it in there and then you could solve it again and it should feel like uh, new so one thing that I, I didn't show in here and I didn't want to because I didn't want to spoil the maze but also when I take it out um, I'll look at the maze and I'll inspect it and I'll go over kind of a, an assembly part maybe in another video but um, you know, usually sometimes if there's a lot of, um, you know, build up, if there's a lot of like chips or, um, you know, a little debris, you know, I'll take a, a Q-tip or even a toothbrush and I'll get that out. And then I have a little bit of automotive grease that I'll put just a dab in. You don't want to put too much because then you could um, result in where you clog the hole, then you have a trouble with the pin getting in and out of the, the sleeve and into the core. So I put just a little bit of grease in there. And it's really important that when picking the grease, I mean, there's different kinds. Some people use like a liquid-based grease. Um, the main thing is you don't really want to use a graphite-based grease because that graphite has little carbon particles and with a lot of movement, that could wear down pieces. So you want to avoid that as much as possible because you don't want to wear down your maze. So that's it for the, the V1 um, rubber maze. Um, again, next one, I'll kind of go over the V3 and how to disassemble it and get out um, the certificate. And it's a, a little bit, 
more complex than the, the V1, but again, kind of the same principles. All right, thank you.